We're gonna look at a method for diagramming the amount of energy in a system. These are called LOL diagrams. LOL diagrams are used to represent and track the transfer of energy in and out of a system and between different types or forms of energy. These diagrams have a standard format which you can see here. The graph on the left is used to represent the initial energy in the system and the graph on the right is used to represent the final energy in the system. In these examples, we will use three types of energy which are labeled across the bottom of each graph. These are potential gravitational energy, kinetic energy, and spring or elastic energy. In the graph representing the final energy of the system, we also include internal energy. Now this includes things like heat or sound where energy may be transferred to. The three types of energy that we're including in these examples are pretty standard for physics, but we could include any type of energy that's available. For example, we could also include nuclear energy, chemical energy, or even energy from the state of matter that the object is in. Let's take a look at our first example. In this scenario, we have a ball that's being held above the ground. It's then released, and that object accelerates as it falls towards the ground and comes to rest after it hits the surface. We're gonna look at three different points in this motion. Point A, before the object is released. Point B, as it's falling towards the surface, but before it hits the ground. And point C, after it's come to rest, following hitting the ground. Let's start with the basic LOL diagram. We've also included each of the energies we're looking at, in this case, gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy, and spring energy. And remember that the graph on the left represents our initial energy and the graph on the right represents our final energy. The first thing we must do is identify all of the objects that are included in our system. In this first example, we're gonna include as many objects as we can so we can see that that energy is fully transferred at the end. We're going to include the ball, the earth, and the floor in our system. All of this is represented in the circle that represents our system in the LOL diagram. In this case, we're going to look at the energy differences from point A to point B. At point A, before the object is released, all of our energy that's present is in gravitational potential energy. And we'll draw a bar graph to represent this energy. Let's draw a bar graph that has five segments or five units of energy. Let's double check all of the other types of energy. There is no kinetic energy at this point because the object is not yet moving and there is no spring energy because there are no springs and there is no compression taking place. Now let's take a look at the final energy or when the object is at point B. At point B, the object is still off of the ground so there is still some gravitational potential energy. Let's say two units of energy. All of the other energy has been transferred to kinetic energy because the object is accelerating as it moves towards the ground. Let's put in three units of kinetic energy. There is still no spring energy present at this time. There is also no internal energy because there is no sound or vibration that has taken place. As we can see, the total amount of energy, or five units, that was present at the initial point is still present at the final point even though some of that energy has been transferred from gravitational potential energy into kinetic energy. Let's take a look at the scenario from point B to point C on a new LOL diagram. We're gonna start with the same standard format and all the same types of energy that we started with. In this case, our initial energy represents the object at point B. This will be the same energy that we had at the end of our previous LOL diagram which was two units of gravitational potential energy and three units of kinetic energy. Again, the object is still off of the ground and it is moving because it's falling towards the Earth. Let's take a look at point C or the final point in our scenario. This is after the object has come to rest on the floor. In this case, there is no gravitational potential energy because the object is not lifted above the ground. There is no kinetic energy because it's not moving and there is no spring energy because there are no springs present and there is no compression that's happening. All of the energy, all five units of it, has been transferred to internal energy through heat or sound into the ball or into the floor. But again, we can still see that the total amount of energy that was present in the beginning of our scenario is still present at the end of our scenario. Let's look at what this LOL diagram would look like if we had a different system. We are still going to look at the scenario from point B to point C but in this case, we're gonna have a slightly different system. In this case, we are not going to include the floor in our system. We will only include the earth and the ball in our system. Our left or initial energy graph is still the same as it was in our previous system. 
but our right graph or our final energy looks slightly different. There is still no gravitational potential energy, kinetic energy or spring energy. There is still some internal energy, but some of that energy went into the ball as well as into the floor. In the previous system, we included the floor in that system so all of the energy was still present in the system. In this case, we've removed the floor. So some of the energy has gone into the ball and some has gone into the floor, which means it's outside of our system or it's left the system. Let's represent the internal energy that's gone into the ball as two units of energy. This means that there are three units of energy which we must account for and show that it's left our system. Otherwise, we will not have a balance of the same energy at the beginning as at the end. We represent this on the LOL diagram by showing three units of energy exiting our system or leaving our system. We draw a bar graph with an arrow showing which direction it's moving either in or out of our system. In this case, it's moving out of our system. This allows us to show that there are still five units of energy, but some of it has just left our system and so it's not represented on our graph. If we had a scenario where energy was being added to our system, we would represent this in the same way, except for the arrow would show that the energy is coming into the circle or into the system. As you can see, LOL diagrams are very helpful in monitoring and tracking all of the energy in our system and all of the different types and forms of energy that it takes.